Hello, everybody. This is Lance, the PI. They just had a, a pursuit down in L.A., and so I wanted just to show you what happened in L.A. in this pursuit they had down there. So make sure that you uh, subscribe to my channel and click the bell notification. You can be notified when we upload additional videos. So let's start this pursuit. This is one of those, those cars that they're always getting stolen in Sacramento. Yeah. Um, you see some folks that are out on the streets uh, in terms of pedestrians. Uh, and about that, because this driver has been going so fast, so recklessly, blowing stop signs, blowing through intersections, uh, going fast on the freeway, clearly not afraid to hit into something, which uh, we've seen. Uh, and so you worry at this time. Look at that. That's on one of those uh, really nice night weather. Kias. Seen. That's sure one of those Kias. There are people who are out walking their dogs that's you just saw some folks playing basketball there going almost 60 miles an hour at one point um you know people that may be out and not expecting this christine in the fact that this is now a following and not a actual uh you know pursuit with the black and welcome in and everybody welcome on, in is that people uh would really have no reason to think that a car is coming uh, like this they are the helicopters overhead it's got damage on the, the right uh, front LAP you see that damage on the right the front everybody by, no a car pulling into a driveway or backing out there slowed that car for just a second uh, there are two freeways not too far away there's the 10 freeway right. and the 110 the right. suspect was on the 110 before is this driver stop no reversing okay perhaps seeing some traffic ahead uh, again look at the people in the road there pedestrians I would they get you better the get out the way. Person, are they, well, you know the you helicopters know, are there. Right, and the looky-loos that may be watching this on the news and see, oh, that's right by my street. Do I want to go outside and see what's going to happen? We don't know uh, the, the mindset of and Is this person armed? Um, are they under the influence of something? You know, what led to all of this? So uh, it's a good rule of thumb uh, to not put yourself in the middle of one of these things, mm -hmm. not knowing what's going to happen. Hit. Uh, based off of the way this person is driving. Um, so if this is good, the, the better idea is to stay inside. And if you enjoy this sort of thing, uh, keep watching us on TV. So another stop sign. What happens, as we know, Christine, at the end of this. Everybody uh, better get out the street. Through and every one of these traffic Get out the street. There's another one could be added on to uh, this person's potential sentence. Um, so you wonder, as we've talked about so often, make sure you give the like uh, live a with, thumbs up where they live, where their parents give the live, lives a thumbs up lives. Maybe try to stash the car, go into somebody's home uh, or something like that versus sort of a random neighborhood. Oftentimes we see people circling in those neighborhoods trying to get home or trying to get to a loved one who they may be in communication with via cell phone, something like that. We don't know if that's what's happening here, but we do know. Christine oh, Kelly the says they caught the guy that shot at the CHP officer. Out. Okay, good. To get on the 110 freeway not to get on the yeah they freeway you know, and to continue basically what they do is they'll just have the helicopter well, follow them the and the officers will back off from this vehicle uh yeah he's talking to them and then you see the damage there again to that passenger side now we'll see the dragging road. on the passenger uh, side of the car hanging off there and we talk about as you said neighborhoods that might feel familiar to the driver they have stayed in the south la area since we've picked up this again this started in hawthorne it is a following now due to the danger of it. And we keep seeing those pedestrians on the road, the people that are standing in the street, people coming home on a Friday night. It's dinner hour. It's rush hour. Uh, kids are out of school. And you just have to worry about yeah, all Yeah, this happened about less than an hour ago in Los Angeles. Hurt in something like this. Right. So we're at Catalina Street and uh, now moving on to Adams Boulevard. Uh, this is going near Juliet Street. This is the Adams Normandy neighborhood of los angeles uh, again for people just joining us not too far um from usc uh not too far from some of the landmarks in he's not area, driving very fast though exposition parks that's Science one of the Center. benefits uh, so moving pretty quickly right now uh down adams which is a major thoroughfare in that neighborhood uh we do see some people are out at the bus stop out near the 7-eleven and the gas there he goes running the red lights. light um, and uh, they're all potentially 
in the line if this person no it's not live this was this happened about an hour ago uh, i'm just replaying it i couldn't get my my um, setup you know, set up quick enough to, to to show it live following the, so the, i just got it going now but this is uh, this is not live it's about an hour ago in la there is not as much incentive for this thing to end uh you're not going to see clearly a pit maneuver if uh, nobody's there to do it um the, you risk when they move to following um, that this driver could say go into an underground parking lot and uh, the helicopter isn't able to spot them and uh, and that could happen. Look, I'm so, driving on the wrong side of the uh, road. Six o'clock here in Southern California on this Friday night. There's some pedestrians. Y'all better watch out. Joining us for the five o'clock. We now Marla Tejas uh, for the Fox 11 News at six and Marla tonight we begin with yet another pursuit of a uh, alleged stolen Kia Soul. I'm pointing that out because Where is we have it? been covering uh, many pursuits of late of Kia Souls, if you'll remember, Alex. Mm -hmm. And of course, it is one of the most uh, stolen vehicles right now. It's not a good look. Hyundai and Kias are the most stolen vehicles currently. So we have another one. This is underway. Jefferson Park, our extreme nav technology up above. And that doesn't look like it's it. It looks like they lost it. Did we lose it? Potentially. But uh, we, we have been following this and it was it was a, a full blown pursuit. And then they backed off because of the danger um, and, you know, very dangerous considering the damage that was done on that Kia Soul. So a few seconds after I talked about the danger of not having a traditional pursuit with uh, black and whites on the ground um, and because you can lose it from we lose it from the helicopter so there you go uh, you, as we pull out you get a better sense of of where we are um, and you can see Gramercy place there some of the older there we go back on track nice job Sky Fox and uh, finding this it's it is challenging for the helicopter pilots that aid of all the sirens which give them uh, an indication where the car is you're just looking at this small Kia Soul in the midst of all these other cars in the middle of rush hour traffic on on a Friday uh, evening so we did see this uh, car moving real fast earlier um, at one point it looked like there's one person in there two people it. Um, uh, it, it is clear on the other side that there was some serious damage uh, sustained well, on the driver's side of this, and we do see that piece of the car basically riding on the ground. Yeah, I mean, it's the striping of the vehicle there, um, to your point, exactly that, riding on the ground. Uh, so, West Adams Boulevard, picking up speed, 50 plus miles per hour, very dangerous, crossing over the double yellow lines there. This is, you know, that fine line that law enforcement has to uh, walk in terms of do we actively pursue do we back off because of the danger to all of the innocent people out there on this Friday evening six o'clock six oh two uh, this is the the balancing act that they do now where is he going uh, and that they have a lot of experience with uh, mm -hmm. based off of what we've seen not only in the recent weeks but in the recent years as well as we see so many of these pursuits in Southern California so uh, it is uh, interesting that continues to stay on side streets, stay in the South LA community and not move on to the freeway at this point. Um, you wonder if some of that may have to do with the fact that might be jammed at this mm -hmm. point on a Friday night and these side streets don't have as much traffic. Uh, we're joined now by our uh, police specialist, Tim Lin, who spent many years uh, in the chopper and on the ground uh, as part of law enforcement in these pursuits, spent many years in the air uh, covering the... Look at him driving on the wrong the side of the road here. again. Um, Tim, uh, what are the most important things that we should know about this one? Um, with this one, with the way he's driving and uh, the LAPD and also Hawthorne PD not want to stay involved in it, it's just a matter of just falling and hoping he doesn't hit anybody right at this point. Well, um, clearly he's hit, given the damage on the front end there. Now we're on the wrong side of the street, Tim. Uh, oh, gosh, making that left turn. So now we're West Jefferson Boulevard, 7th Avenue, Jefferson Park. Um, what are your thoughts on the fact that currently law enforcement has decided to back off? But, of course, they do track from above. Oh, we do talk about that quite a bit, about the tracking versus actually chasing. And it's kind of a double-edged sword. You know, if you chase them and they wreck into somebody and end up injured, then you have a problem with the uh, civil liability that comes out of that. 
And hey, Debbie, what's going on? Like this, and Welcome in, everybody. In a reckless manner, and he says, you see, he's already hit people. He has a lot of damage on that left front and on the right side as he goes through these intersections without even stopping. Uh, then if he hits somebody at this point, then they will come out and say, well, you should have been chasing him, trying to stop him, because right now all you have is a reckless driver going through these neighborhoods, and there's no indication that he's being chased. There's no sirens. There's nothing of that sort going on to warn people around him to get out of the way. So all you have is this person coming up on intersections. Okay, what's he going to do here? He's kind of stuck. And, uh, you know, kind of pushing through intersections. What's he going like to do? And so you have a couple things that could happen on this besides just getting into a wreck. You could get into a road rage act situation where he makes somebody else mad and they start chasing each other. Then you have two people uh, racing around the streets. But working here uh, along Arlington and 36, these are very tight areas and this time of night. They are all congested. So if he starts trying to hit the wrong side of the street or push his way through this traffic, it's going to end up with uh, more likely crashing here. But uh, obviously he doesn't care and he's just going to push his way through and uh, not worry about anybody else on the road. Yeah, I mean, this neighborhood, for people that, that are familiar with it, is very jammed in. Uh, there's not a lot of wide streets. There's not a lot of places to go. Um, and there's a lot of people that may be out on the streets as well, which increases the danger of this and may increase the agitation for this driver. Um, we wonder about their familiarity with this neighborhood. Why do they continue to stay in this neighborhood when they could be going somewhere else, uh, kind of going in circles in this South L.A. Uh, spot? I mean, circles may be the wrong word. Uh, sometimes we literally see somebody go in circles and keep going on the same streets. That's not what we're seeing here. Uh, but sticking to this South L.A. area um, as they uh, continue to drive and uh, continue to evade law enforcement who have made the decision to not be uh, chasing. Welcome in, everybody. Back. Welcome in. This is a pursuit that took place a little while ago in Los Angeles. And, um, I couldn't get my setup go hey, Tim, so quick enough to show it live, so we're just doing a quick replay of it PD, uh, before I get out live myself. Watch out, dude. Watch out. For this pedestrian. pedestrian going, huh? Okay, yeah, he's like, got, be careful. Right and yeah. thank goodness man is okay. Uh, so Hawthorne PD first one to pick up the pursuit and then handed it off to CHP. So then is it CHP's call to back off? And if they do go back on into pursuit mode, is that CHP? How does that hierarchy work? Well, no, well as soon as CHP let it go and called off pursuit, it doesn't belong to anybody. And uh, at this point, LAPD is aware of it because of the air units overhead. They all communicate with each other. The sheriff's helicopters, CHP helicopters, as well as now, what you getting ready to do? Are on the same frequency, and they can talk with each other in the, from air to air. And so they're keeping each other apprised of what's going on. Now it's up to the watch commanders in these the decision whether they re-engage on the ground with us. Uh, they're dead in the middle of uh, LAPD territory. So CHP would not get back involved at this point, would be my best guess. Uh, and right now, it looks like LAPD is not interested in it as well. And as you know, over the you know last year or so, they've really changed policy and procedures with their pursuits of not chasing uh, what is a property crime. This is a stolen vehicle. That's all they have the information about. And at that point, it just becomes, as I said, a property crime. The uh, person being arrested, you know, is going to be for felony for felony evading. But it, uh, unless they figure out who he hit or what he hit prior to this pursuit starting, or did it happen during the time Hawthorne PD was involved, that's the only charge ending. And right now, uh, we don't have that information. So, mm, okay. uh, it's you know, the watch commanders are going to be watching the feed from you know the local media on this, also hearing the call from the area units that are overhead. Uh, to decide when to come back in, but as you said, over the last year or so. Uh oh. Okay. Not really this is when things get more. Dangerous. Okay. Wrong and side of the road. Wrong side of the road. road. And we're going fast. This is where uh, we have the much higher potential for crash. Uh, thankfully, got back in side of the road, but now this driver uh, is getting increasingly aggressive. Without the ground units there. I mean, there really isn't a whole lot that can be done to stop this thing, right? I mean, it's basically just wait and see, watch what the driver does, and hope he doesn't do anything too bad, because then they might uh, question you and say, why weren't you on the ground? Right, exactly. And when they disengage from the pursuit, they're not going to be waiting ahead of him with spike strips or any type of uh, prevention like that. But, uh, yeah, like I said, double-edged sword, you're going to 
get sued one way or the other. It's just a matter of uh, how they're hoping this guy just gives up and gets rid of the car. So uh, that's yeah, he hit something with on that right side or the left side. He's going to get for it and just park it and get out. So, but right now, wrong side of the street again, and uh, going down Western here. It's a very heavily traveled street. You see, he's going against traffic with cross traffic coming ahead. And just, you know, he's just lucky he's not uh, going head on with somebody who's just trying to get home to, from work or from school. And also at this time of night in that area, you have a lot of people on bicycles, pedestrians and things of that sort. But here, just right down the center divider, uh, working his way down the street, passing traffic. And as you're going along, just going home, you're not expecting somebody to come down. The uh, pedestrians, watch out. To move in. There he's coming up on a fresh red. And Whoa, go watch that the person. Intersection. Yeah. Multiple people yeah. there. Yeah, and then you also think, you know, sometimes people that may be in traffic, they're looking down at their phones or they're, you know, busy making plans on a Friday night and may not be totally, completely alert and not exceed, be expecting somebody to be driving really fast on the wrong side of the road, too. Um, and a reminder to all of us, me sometimes guilty of this, too, uh, to, you know, when you're driving, be alert. Well, exactly. You're going to have to keep your head on the swivel when you're driving around town, but you're never expecting somebody to come up to the stop sign and just blow right through it. I mean, right. How many times have you made that left turn in front of a car coming to a four-way stop expecting them to stop? Now, this guy is not going to do that. Or coming up to a you know, green light, not paying attention. Here, this guy comes down the wrong side of the street and goes right through. They got him at the ice cream, cream truck. They passed the ice cream truck. The problem we're having here with this guy driving the way he's driving yeah. is that... But he's not going very fast, though. That's what one of the good things. He's not going super fast. so aggressively without uh, ground units on his tail. I mean, th this is... this is He doesn't need to do this. No, and, and people that, you know, do things like this, they're not really uh, right... I'll tell if there's some type of intoxicant on board or they've been using alcohol yeah. or drugs. Or, or do they have a mental issue? We talk about that quite a bit. Where what causes a person to take this much risk just to uh, drive around really fast? And you know, I don't know if he's trying to hope the police come back in so he can, uh, or if he's just just being, you know. For those just joining, this is not live. This is happened about it ended about 15 minutes ago. Uh, this is a pursuit that took place in Los Angeles. Yeah, significant damage. And I couldn't get my setup up in time to, to broadcast it live. So we're just doing a replay of it. So you're watching a replay of it. Make sure you like the live. Um, give it a thumbs up. And then, and then make sure you subscribe to my channel as well. And hit the bell notification. You can be notified when we upload additional videos. And after this is over, I'll be going live myself out on the streets of Sacramento here. Well, we are soon, uh, probably pursuit. about an hour after this, we, we finish watching this. Off, so that's why you haven't seen active black and whites tracking the guy on the bike there. Um, goodness, thank goodness that person is okay. We're on Menlo Avenue and West 40th Place, LA. And we've seen the same territory for the most part. Um, Bendigo, it's, it's nighttime here. Good this. evening. And Tim, the, the fact that law enforcement has decided to back off, now we are at that wider view because of Sky Fox. Obviously, if the right person corner. knew... <laughs> right corner? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, yeah. Sky Fox can't hear you, yeah. right? <laughs> I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, Alex really would, be, well. Alex would be in his heyday. <laughs> Okay. Um, Tim, so here we are. I don't know if we've lost... You the didn't get the notification that was point. live? Oh, okay. You know, I don't know why uh, th they give up or they go to th their known location and, and surrender or just make a run for it or something. Just get the vehicle off the road. Yeah, open for me. Yeah, they have lost. They drove out the uh, bottom right corner of the screen there, as Alex said. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be tough getting it back with all these trees and all this area. And, it, and also, I haven't had a chance to look at the radar to see if uh, there's an LAPD unit overhead. But from what I'm guessing, there is not an area unit overhead because as uh, uh, the pilot would do in the, in the news helicopter is kind of key on where the police helicopter is. But right now it uh, looks like they've completely lost it here. So, Yeah, we did see a, a, a pilot maybe was over it, but uh, maybe they've lost it as well. I mean, at, at this point, you know, there are 
basically four outcomes. One, uh, we lose it and the cops lose it from the air and then the pursuit is over that way. Welcome Two, in, everybody. Uh, Welcome the in. The driver just gives up because they run out of gas or decide that they found a home or found another place to escape to. Three, um, there's some sort of crash that causes the driver to, uh, to give up. Um, those seem to be the, the potential outcomes at this point as we try to figure out where exactly this car makes you wonder oh. is he telling this guy I want to get in and are we now about to go on the freeway it looks like we may be heading back onto the freeway this is the 110 freeway we have not been on the freeway since we've been on the air with this for the last 20 25 minutes or so uh, as anybody knows who drives in uh, traffic on LAD Friday ride. nights in Los Angeles there a lot of traffic on a Friday evening in the on the 110 uh, this is uh, an area where there's a lot of different freeways coming in together uh, and we are now headed on the southbound way uh, we're near Flower Street 42nd uh, on the 110 freeway. We'll see how long this driver stays on the freeway. Well, there was a LAPD uh, ground unit right behind him as he got on the freeway. It looks like ground unit pulled off to the uh, right there underneath that overpass. So now that it looks like Skyfox may have lost him again here. It's really difficult in this area with that uh, overhead carpool lane yep. and then the high sound walls to be able to get in there. And like it's unfortunate, they cannot get into the uh, Class Bravo airspace, which is the airspace that leads into LAX. So once they get into that area, they have to back off. So that's why you're looking at such a long shot. So uh, the camera operator having a heck of a time with Sky Fox staying with it just because okay. of not we're hearing that he has been taken into custody right underneath the bridge somewhere so maybe we'll get a visual well, on that, that it. yeah that may have just been it so uh that's good news uh although we we don't see that happening right. but we intel that the the pursuit is over he's on the ground and will be put into handcuffs uh any moment now so Okay, so it looks like they got him in custody. Uh, let's see if we get a shot of it. Okay, there it is. There he is, folks. There he is. He's in custody under the freeway there. They got him at a felony pr prone position. He's laying on the ground. Um, and so they got him in custody. They got him in custody. So um, make sure if, every, if you're just now following me, we like to uh, go to these kind of calls. If we was in this, out, out in the streets, we would try to re respond to something like this. And so we could give it to you live. And what I'm going to do, too, is I'm going to get my stream set up. So when stuff comes on that's interesting and I'm not in the streets, I can stream it live to everybody here. So thank you for coming along. We're going to end this stream now. Um, but appreciate you guys coming out and watching this quick little pursuit here in life.